Heart off the record with Mary Turner. There aren't too many rock and roll groups that are led by women, and there's only one that's run by sisters, Heart. I'm Mary Turner, and for the next hour, I'll be talking with the Wilson sisters, Anne. I just always wanted to be what I am now. And Nancy. A fire chief. <laughs> and their friend, co-writer, and co-producer, Sue Innes. I'd like to see the Wilson sisters like the Marx Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the ones I I'll know, be anyway. Harpoon. <laughs> Heart. Off the record. I've heard that Seattle was pretty progressive back in the 60s, and that the three of you used to take acid in Ann's bedroom. We had purple oranges, 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 sunshine, 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 sunshine
Hart's fifth album, Baby Looks Strange, was released on Valentine's Day in 1980. But Nancy says it's not your standard Valentine, since Baby was created at the Heartbreak Hotel. My house became the girls' dorm at the time during Baby Looks Strange when Anne split up with her former boyfriend and Sue moved here for, or to Seattle. We all sort of Berkeley gathered and gathered up and pulled up together. She kind of ended her many, many years of relationships with academia. And it was just like the heartbreak hotel. I know, it really was. <laughs> the end of the road. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, all we really had Lonely at Hearts that Club. point was each other because I was in a really unrequited relationship too. And Hard times for love. <laughs> <laughs> We all lived in my little cheese box house that I bought in a big hurry to get away from someone. And <laughs> and, and it was just really fun. It all comes you know? out now. It's a four-way link-up. We all just kept each other together, and we had some real soul-searching to do, and a lot of it came through in the music for Baby Lestrange. Yeah, that mm -hmm. album is... It's a soul-searching kind of, of album. Oh, yeah. Heart has always been both very honest and very open in songs and in interviews and just about everything you do. I know that's got to be painful sometimes, but it seems like you've never tried to hide your emotions. That's something that's kept us sane, you know, a little bit. It's just, you have to talk to somebody, really. And one person you can always talk to, uh, I found, is your public. You know, like, they, they really love us, you know. The kids really love us. And, like, the ones that like heart, you know, that are our fans and they understand you know like stuff that's going on with us and we can trust them they're they're not going to turn on us you know as long as we don't turn on them and it's a it's something that's healthy i think like as long as we don't start um misusing it, you know spitting out weird stuff or or stuff that's too personal you know that's really something you don't want to go overboard on but just being open is healthy and it's kept us more on the track i think stable then having all these skeletons and all these closets everywhere. Well, we come from a real emotional family. <laughs> the true. Wilsons yeah. are really highly emotional. There's always a box of Kleenex out. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we live right here at our tear ducts. You know? No, it's not, it's not quite. <laughs> the crying Wilsons. Like. <laughs> the crying Wilsons. No, it isn't that bad. But no. like, like our parents were both never afraid to show their emotion, especially our mother. You know, happy and sad, anger and everything else. And... It's just how we were raised. It's it's comfortable for us to be that way. It isn't something to be embarrassed about or um, something that's unhip or, you know, luckily, I feel sorry for anybody that couldn't show their emotions. What a terrible thing. Anne and Nancy Wilson have been away from home for the last six years. After their debut album, Dreamboat Annie, was released, Hart made its first international tour. And since then, they've spent at least six months out of every year out on the road. When we come back... Anne and Nancy revealed the secret to their survival, off the record. I'm Mary Turner. You've been doing nothing but major tours now for the last six years. How do you manage to stay so healthy? That's a tough thing, though, is to stay yeah. healthy on the road. We first left home in 76, and we haven't been home since. To back up Dreamboat Annie, and like every year, it's just like a hamster running on a wheel, you know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to make it sound so... so. It's not so that depressing, bad. you know, or or nihilistic or anything. No, playing, <laughs> playing is always the real Great, yeah. high you know, thing, and it is probably the healthiest thing we get to do too. Is go exercise and being smoked. Over. Really work out, yeah. <laughs> really taking a lot of smoke. Yeah. Hmm. Breathe that air. No, but like, like you really get really hot on stage. You really kind of glow a lot, too. and you really work out. You know, you really run around and really pump and sing and play, are active, and that's that's great. But the rest of it, you just cart it around, you know, from place to place. Yeah. Get in the bus, get in the van, get in the room, get in this hall, get in the bus, get in the van, get in the room. Get on the stage. Yeah. There are two things on the road that you can count on always being the same. <laughs> and that's the hamburgers and the chicken. And what you can do is you can order chicken and then take the skin off. And it's pretty much the same everywhere you go, you know. <laughs> what can they do to chicken? <laughs> yeah, like just... the. Just have fried chicken and then just take the skin Other off. than inject them with hormones. Yeah, yeah well, you have to expect that these days. Oh, yeah. Since you spend so much time either recording or touring, do you ever get a chance to go to other people's concerts? Yeah, whenever we can, when someone cool comes. The police. Like the Bruce Springsteen is an incredible oh, live Lord. performer. Um, well, we've always been great fans of Elton John. I think we've seen right. every, every show, every show yeah. and every tour. 
and we met Bill Wyman, and we were excited to meet him, and and so it was a great a great moment when he came backstage, and the a hush fell over the crowd, and, and they go, here he comes, and the door opened, and Ann and I, everyone stood up, you know, hey Bill, and Ann and I are tall, <laughs> and <laughs> like five seven. five seven, you know, that's sort of tall. And, I'm about eye to eye with Bill Wyman too. And we had some heels on. And, <laughs> His hand sort of fit inside ours, you know, and a great big woman grip, you know. Hi, Bill. How you doing? How you doing? We've had a few of those, you know, small English rock stars. You know. Actually, Jagger was bigger than I thought he was. You know, like... Well, he's, uh, we, he's worked out and he's more messy. Yeah, we backed up the stones in Boulder last summer. And, and after the second show, Jagger just comes bouncing in the room all of a sudden, you know. Hey, Mick Jagger's here, Nance. And so, you know, like, oh... Hi, Mick, you know. <laughs> and so he stood, you know, about 5'8", something like that. Real, yeah, real nice. He's just so skinny. He's <laughs> kind of cat-like, you know. Yeah. We got to meet um, wow, where's Marlon, Robert Plant. Right? We just right. got to oh, meet Robert he's, Plant he's pretty in beautiful. England, yeah, he's, like, a couple of weeks ago. and He's he's a, a big boy. Oh, he's a, he's he's gorgeous. Oh, and he's he's a great person. He moves across the backstage area. He was very he had a great sense of humility that mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting him to have. Really a great sense of humor and just puts you at ease right away. He just he just knows how to just be real easy and talk to you and not make you go, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> it's Robert it's... Stairway to Heaven Plus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Did you get a chance to sing with him? No, he was really he shy. Was he, shy. He didn't want to do it. He knows our stuff, he said, too, and he likes yeah. our stuff. But... And we do rock and roll for an encore, their song. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we broke into that, I didn't know he was there, you know. We didn't but... tell Anne until later. <laughs> On purpose. We, we broke into that and he broke into a big grin. He, he loved it. In a moment, sneak previews of the first Heart movie. Off the record, I'm Mary Turner. Record albums aren't the only thing that Hart wants to produce. Sue Ennis is writing the first Hart movie. The story of Hart is, for me, the story I know is the story of Anne and Nance. And, and that's a pretty good story that I think, you know, I'd like to tell um, and enhance it a little bit choose the best parts but I'm not really sure that um, that that's exactly the the first thing that that we want to do I think it'd be it'd be really great to do kind of a short first of all just a short little 15 minute thing yeah. something funny because um, I think these guys are, are pretty hilarious <laughs> and uh, and I don't think the humorous side has ever really been explored for the first yeah. time musically maybe on this album you know private yeah. audition the song and this man is mine too, but I'd like to see the Wilson sisters like the Marx Brothers. <laughs> and those are the ones I I'll be anyway. Harpo. <laughs> you be Grouch. <laughs> Since there still aren't a lot of women who are very successful in rock and roll, do you worry about the kind of image that you're presenting to the audience? Are you extra cautious about presenting the right kind of image? Well, well about the only thing that I don't think we should do is mm -hmm. to put across anything dangerous like for instance a while ago we were talking about drugs you know well we don't take drugs now and I think it's important that kids know that that we don't give an image of being drug takers because we're not and it's a bad thing to do you know oh, yeah. and um, it's not healthy so that I think that we have, <laughs> we've got a responsibility as far as that kind of stuff goes guns things like that bad stuff you know? yeah, we don't keep guns <laughs> no guns no guns allowed. <laughs> anyway, the rest of it, no. Just we just be ourselves in the old-fashioned vernacular, and that's yeah. the best thing we can do. I think it's good too that sometimes, well, maybe recently more than ever, in our music, our sense of humor comes through a little bit, and I guess it's a good, maybe a good example for people to know that there's some women in music or popular or whatever who also can be funny, you know, because women are just kind of expected to either be self-destructive rock victims or <laughs> or somebody like Olivia Newton-John, who kind of comes off to be real healthy, you know, apple yeah, sure, make a move <laughs> person, on me, you know, healthy. But you know what I mean, it's yeah. kind of like human beings that with a sense of humor who, are, who accept the fact that you know, we're imperfect too, 
and we wore braces and we were fat, ugly teenage girls who were unpopular but had our guitars, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of the non-media idea of what women are. Mm -hmm. Well, we sort kind of, of set the media idea in a way, mm -hmm. you know, in some ways, like, not just us, but, but like Stevie and Christine McVie, too, you know, we're some of the first, the four of us, to do what we're doing. About now there's the a lot, time. but but we kind of stretched the definition a little bit, I would say, and set a new sort of trend, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to call it a trend, that you can be whatever you want, you know, you don't have to fit into anybody else's mold.